Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to an early tech edition of Strange Love Live. This is a special bonus episode this evening, and I'm joined, as always, by Dr. Normal. Hello. And by our special guest, Alex Legaransky <laughs> from iPhone yeah. Podcaster. Hey, guys. Hi. How's it going? So Alex was on our show a while back talking about a web app that he created uh, for the iPhone, allowing you to listen to podcasts, streaming podcasts, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, as opposed to downloading them directly to your phone. And recently, or I don't know how recently he came up with it, but he came up with with an app um, for the iPhone store, and he just got the news today that it was declined. And so, Alex, we want you to tell us a little bit about the app that you created and uh, the process of making it and why you think it was that it, it got uh, turned down. Because Dr. Normal is not happy about it. Um. <laughs> Along with many other people. Yeah, well, I mean, well, I'm not happy about it either. But I mean, I guess they denied it because it was competing with iTunes podcast section. But uh, you know, I didn't really see it as a competitor. I saw it as more of an add-on to to iTunes. Um, but I guess they denied it, and a lot of people are up up in arms at it. How many people um, did you have in the beta test program? Well, I had almost 100 people testing it for me. That was what they allowed to set up. So I've set up, you know, I, I think it was like 80 people. And I said, everybody was giving me real good feedback on it. They really liked it. It was working. You know, they were able to listen to their podcasts. It was like minor things, like little bugs, the whole app. And I managed to fix all of them. And then I submitted it. A month ago, I submitted it. And, uh, you know, in the middle of the last back to me and they told me that it was not going to be up in the app store so um just to step back how long have you been working so you did the you did the um web app um a while back um you had the uh, i'll tell you i i, go I ahead. designed a web app i designed a web app in january january 2007 and it's been running fine i mean but then they announced the uh, the SDK, and so I've never designed it for Apple. I've never built apps for Apple. And, and when the SDK came out, I figured, let me learn how to build apps for Apple and uh, a podcaster app. And so I did that. So you so about how how much how long did you code and have it in beta test? Because it didn't take you a long time to get from from a. Uh, uh, kind of an early beta with several bugs to a really, uh, I mean, what was the development cycle? How long did that take you? I've been developing for about uh, a month and a half for uh, the platform. Now i got to tell you, I'm a Windows developer. I've been developing Windows software for the last 10 years. I've never developed an Objective-C. So it took me about a month to build a podcaster the way it is today. Um, when you joined in, it was pretty early in uh in the development of it. You know, like you said, I was kind of in the beta test early on, but it sure didn't seem like it was that uh, that early. It seemed like you really knocked this thing down pretty quickly and 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 got it up in the App Store. Was it about a four-week development cycle or six weeks? or? About yeah, it was about four to six. No, when, when you joined in, it was only about two weeks in. Uh, so it was about a four-week. It wasn't, it, it wasn't that long in. Yeah, I mean, just... The very basics, I mean, I had to learn the very basics of iPhone development, how, how to compile an app, how to start a new project. Like, I didn't know any of those things. Once I learned those things, which took a few weeks, it was fairly easy to get into the development of it. Um, well, you did, you did a great job, and, and it, uh, the app is, is, uh, is really solid um, now. So... And you followed Apple's process for for setting up the for getting the app up in the uh, App Store. Is that correct? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? You followed uh, Apple's prescribed process for for getting getting this up in the App Store, essentially. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I, there are human interface guidelines, so I I made the. They always want the interface to be as close to how they designed it as possible. So I did that exactly that, that way. 
Um, I didn't break any rules. I didn't out of their, you know, I tried to follow their guidelines as close as possible, and I think I did that pretty pretty well. Um, they always said to me, look as close to their apps as possible, and I think I did that. So the only real issue was that they felt it was competing with iTunes. Well, I don't think they, they didn't give you really, did they give you an actual reason why they rejected it? Well, I put in my blog, uh, america.blogspot.com, <laughs> was exactly what they wrote. They wrote that Podcaster was um, was duplicating the features of iTunes, which I guess it it was supposed to duplicate the features of iTunes, but it was supposed to duplicate them on the iPhone. And that's something that the iPhone doesn't do. So, I mean, how am I, I'm not competing against the desktop. I'm competing against... Correct. There's really nothing on the iPhone that does what iTunes does. You can't download a, a podcast directly to your iPhone without docking it, which is sometimes a little frustrating. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's always frustrating. I mean, every night I come home, I want to download. There's always one podcast that I'm listening to on the way home that does not stream. It's either they got the rate too high or something, you know, their network is too slow does not stream over edge. And so I need to download that podcast. I need an app like Podcaster so I can download that podcast. Just, I mean, Podcaster does it. Apple doesn't do it for me. Yeah, and I think just... Just disappointing a little bit that they... So I think stepping back, stepping back just a little bit, um, uh, in a previous, when we had you on the show uh, a, a while back when we were talking about the web app, uh, you and I had talked about how practical it was to have a wireless device, um, whether it be on Edge or or 3G or Wi-Fi, where you're kind of. You and I had a similar thing where you're you're getting ready to commute to work every day, and you may not have all the time to sync, or there's a new podcast that comes up overnight in the morning, and being able to have something that will actually either stream uh, wirelessly to the iPod. Or, or, or in, in this case, in the app, to actually be able to download natively to the iPod and listen to is just really useful. Um, and I think that's, you know, and this is, of course, the missing feature um, in the iPhone. Um, and this is the feature that you're trying to address. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm not, at, I'm not doing anything that's out of the scope of the iPhone. I download podcasts directly to my iPhone. Why should I have to sync? I mean, I understand music. I purchased the music, and it's on my computer, so I have to sync to my computer. Yes, they're free. They're over the air. You should be able to get them anytime you want to. Why don't I have to sync with iTunes to get my podcast? It's just if Apple wants us to go to iTunes, that's one thing, but it's really unfair to all its customers to have to go through iTunes, you know, to just to get their podcasts. I mean, I want to listen to my podcast when it comes out. Yeah, and another good point uh, I know that uh, people in the chat room are bringing up is, you know, there are streaming applications on the iPhone. There's there's AOL Radio, there's Pandora, there's Last FM. I mean, there's there are streaming streaming uh, applications today, so um, native applications on the iPhone that are free. So it's um, it's kind of odd. I I kind of want to move this. Um, you know, we kind of want to move the the podcast along from from a, from a maybe a bitch session to um, to more of kind of a, a solution session. So, what kind of actions are you taking right now? I think right before we started the show, you actually sent out a tweet um, about a phone number that people can call to to um, to inquire about this. I guess a couple of people that were really looking forward to Podcaster, they were, I told you, you know, when I told them that they couldn't get Podcaster because it was denied in the app, so they actually ended up calling Apple customer support and main venting, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So I asked one of them what number, and that was, you know, the, the number that I tweeted was the number they called, and, you know, I mean, other users to, to post their complaints if they really had them. I mean, it's really unfair. It's really unfair to not post my app for the reason that they gave me. 
I'm going to go ahead and, and read that number out back to everybody. Ludicrous. I'm going to read back the number to everybody. So if they don't already have it, if they don't follow you, they can find it. If you want to call Apple and complain that they're not letting uh, the podcaster app into the app store, you can call 1-800-275-2273 and ask for customer relations. Um, Alex has warned in his tweet that you should expect to be on hold for a while and tell them that they made a mistake. Now, I want to tell you guys that I, I called that number. A lot of my users have called that number, and they said that you're going to be for a while. So I'm just writing what they've told me. Um, I think that the users that have called for me have done enough, and I didn't feel like it was my place. To, I have sent them several emails back, and they didn't get back to me. Now, one thing I did notice was the person that rejected my app was the same person that rejected pulled my finger app a few weeks ago. Now, maybe it's just a problem with that, you know, person that's, uh, I don't know, approving all the apps. Maybe they need to get rid of it, get another person. Yeah, so, but, but, but was it the same person who approved I'm Rich? <laughs> I'm not familiar with that app. <laughs> so there was an app that was pulled down from the app store that you bought for, do you remember, Alex, how much that app cost? It was like the maximum you, ha- you can pay for an a, a iPhone app. It was like in the thousands of dollars, and you actually. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, who who wants to be rich? I guess. Who wants or, to be rich? It was a thousand dollars. It was nine hundred ninety nine. It was nine hundred ninety nine. That was the max. That you had. Yeah. I, I bought one of those app by the way, and I didn't think twice. <laughs> you, no, you, I'm just kidding. I, yeah. I, that, was, that was a joke. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> if only everyone could but, see yeah, the look they, on they, Dr. Normal's face when, when Alex uh, said that, because for a moment he believed him. That's right. <laughs> uh, that's, I can't afford that app just yet, but you know, well, at least I can't afford it without thinking. Well, I think the problem with that um, app is So people, they approve it. Yeah. I think the problem with that app was that, you know, it was like nine ninety nine, right? And, you know, people think, oh. I, yeah, it was I the highest that. price that you could charge. Right, but if you don't look closely, you think nine point nine nine, right? Oh, nine dollars ninety nine. Ten dollars, and I think you know some people probably. You yeah. Know. Um, but you know it's it's kind of funny. There's been a lot of controversy as how how that that app uh, slipped through the, the 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 review process. So, but anyway, uh, so back to next steps. Are you still working on the code? I noticed that you had um, posted a URL. Um, to get a UUID. I'm not sure. Uh, I didn't look into it very much. Can you tell us a little bit about that and your ongoing work with the code um, as you're kind of waiting to to figure out what Apple wants to do with this app? Well, I mean, usually Apple doesn't go back and say they denied it. They denied it. They're not going to, they're not going to say we made a mistake and we're going to approve it. At least I've never heard them make Maybe four. They did reply to me and say that I could distribute the app with the ad hoc session, uh, with the ad hoc, you know, provision to go onto the website. I could sign up people and I could give them the application, which is the st- that I gave you the application. Um, one thing that I noticed on the website, is they said that if you sign somebody up with ad hoc and then you, you take them off, the provision stays on the phone for one year, you know. It expires, it's stood on the phone, which means that I could sign you up and the application and then take you off, but it's good on your phone for one year and I could sign up what else in the meantime. And that's probably what I'm going to do until Apple either sets me up or we find a different way to distribute the app. Uh, I, w- I was just going to say, are you thinking of, shall we say, alternatives for the podcast native podcaster app are you thinking of ways of uh redoing some of the features and then so i guess you know in a nutshell if i brainstorm it i would think well okay so if you did a podcaster version that didn't have the download feature not that i'm suggesting that i find that very useful um would you resubmit it in a different the but would it even? Seat. I mean, the the core function of it is the. Well, you could still stream, though. Yeah, I know. I, I, that's why I'm asking Alex. I mean, I, I, do you have some ideas along those lines? Modifying it and then resubmitting. 
Well, I mean, I did reply to Apple, asked them like, "What do you guys want me to do to to change this app that gets approved on on the App Store?" And they didn't reply at all. I mean, there are things to do. Say you're browsing the web app and you want to download a podcast. I could do it. Just downloads a file that you right. sent to it, right? In which case, Mister.fm would send the file to my app and it would download it. Right. Uh, but tell me anything that they want me to change so I have no idea you know I don't want to put another work into it and just have it denied is there I mean and there's really no way to guarantee that there's really no way that you that they're going to say well if you do this this and that we guarantee we won't reject it I mean how how many man hours did you put into the development of the application Roughly. I mean, you've been working on it for a while. I know that you said that once... I would you... say uh, at least uh, 20 hours I've been into it. I worked on it hard. You yeah. know, I worked on it night and day a really long time. It was the only thing that I was doing for a really long time. And not that... I wish that Apple would have said explicitly what they're going to allow what they're not going to allow into the, to the App Store. Basically, what I got out of it was allow all the apps... They're going to check the apps to make sure that they don't crash the phone or they don't do anything illegal. And as far as I know, my app doesn't crash the phone. It doesn't steal people's information. It doesn't do anything illegal. It, it perfectly to the, S, to the way the SDK was designed. And I guess they're just it because they're being anti-competitive. I call it's shenanigans. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, it is, it is, it is kind of bizarre because it's a, it's a, it's a very useful app, and and you know if you look at the different useful apps. So, um, so really, you're kind of, kind of. It seems to me like. So are you are you looking at other platforms now, or are you just kind of, kind of going to, going to hang out? I'm, I'm, I'm still unclear as to what your next steps are. are you just, or are you just going to kind of take a deep breath and and decide your next move? Well, I mean, I guess for now I'm going to try to distribute the app as much as I could. I did already put a lot of work into it, and it works good. And so I want to give it to as many people as I could. I'm considering distributing it on the Google platform, and I'm just considering uh, it, just expanding it out to other platforms. But I don't know what the need is. I mean, there's a need on the iPhone for this. Right. So there's our opportunity to plug tonight's show at 10 p.m. Pacific time <laughs> where we're going to have Don Park who's a local developer here who has been working on the Android platform so we're going to we're going to be talking about all things mobile tonight and um, and I don't know I mean I really love my my iPhone but I've said in the past before I got the iPhone and even now I'm waiting to see what 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 Android looks like when it comes out I, I mean, I was a Palm Trio user for many years, um, and I changed from my Palm Trio to the iPhone because I do think ultimately it was the better platform. But you know, there's always a better platform around the, around the bend that that I'd be willing to look at. You know, and I'm I'm kind of I'm interested to see how you Google know, I, and Android do things. I always thought that Apple should have a different. Um, pr- for getting apps into the app store. They shouldn't just have one person deciding what an app should get in there. I always thought that it should be like 100 users and they get to the app and if the majority of the users vote the app up, then it goes into the app store. And if the majority of the users vote it down, it doesn't go into the app store. Having I, one I, decide that is just interesting, you know, too much on one person. I agree. I think that's a, I think that's a really good way to What's decide that, it. Cammy? I said I think it's a great way to decide it, provided that it meets what well, I think you said the two criteria were that it doesn't crash the phone and then it doesn't do anything illegal, which yours clearly doesn't, then let a majority of people decide rather than one person with a stamp. And, uh, you know, clearly the person that's deciding whether or not the app should be in the store is not the majority of the users, does not feel like the majority of the users. It's just not fair, but I mean, I, well, it, it's a, it, but it is know, a, it's not fair. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you're developing for a closed system, right? I mean, this is a, I mean that, and that is one of the value adds that Apple has as a company and that the, the whole Apple ecosystem is that it is a closed system, right? Um, 
Whereas there are other movements out there in mobile that are that are open open platforms. Um, you know, one thing I just want to bring up one point, and and it's something that kind of hit the chat room, and I, I want to bring up this point as well. Uh, podcasts podcasts are free. And um, the one thing is you have to, you're kind of tied into iTunes for podcasts. And I know that, that when I was using the, the, the Palm device, I could just download podcasts any way I wanted to and get it in my Palm device. I personally, and I'm, I'm just going to go out here and give my opinion. I personally think that, that iTunes is great, is great for buying music it's great for music use itunes for music but for podcasting which are free free audio out there uh there should be multiple methods and i think i think apple should provide multiple methods for podcasts and user generated content and and you know and and we'll do itunes for 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 the content we want to buy the music we want to buy and maybe the applications i don't know i i'm just i i have to lay my opinion out there and i uh, i appreciate someone in the chat i mean you got you, that up. you got it exactly right podcasts are yes are you know open they're free they're not tied to any music record label they're just they're something that everybody should get at any time at any point that they without being obligated to purchase something or without being obligated to download some sort of piece of software. And, uh, I mean, maybe I'm from the point of view where they want to, they want everybody to go to the iTunes store so that maybe they'll download a podcast, but they'll also and they'll buy it. I mean, honestly, I've never purchased one piece of music through the iTunes store. I've subscribed to hundreds of podcasts, but I've never purchased anything. They're just... Podcasts no. are an open thing, and they should be able to treat. They should be treated. Yeah. I'm the same way. I get my music off of my CDs. We have all of our CDs in a in a storage box, um, and that's how we get our music. But but my primary download function from uh, iTunes is to get podcasts. Well, and, and yeah, I, I think I think, and a lot of people get uh, music. And uh, video and and you know TV shows and and movies and stuff off of iTunes and that's great and I I mean that's great that's that's a great Apple business model and I I think they're and they're doing really well at it but um, I, I I separate that you know whether or not you use iTunes for your music or not or you rip CDs or you download I think that's a different discussion but but I think the separating the I the yeah, user generated no. podcasting from the um, Purchase content, I think, is the real issue. Well, one thing I don't have in the iTunes, um, in the App Store submission, is an process. I mean, there was, at no point did they they say, well, they sent me an email saying that they rejected my app. They said, reply to this email if you want to say thing. And I did reply, and that's when they got back to me and said, your app was rejected, it implicates iTunes. And then I replied back, and I said, what can I do to fix this? And they back to me. There's no sort of appeals process there. And that's just unfair to develop. Um, we spent a lot of time, and I mean, they must have to develop as one of the first developers to develop for the, I, you know, the, the yeah, knowing that I was going to do the same app that I was doing as a web app. So it's just, it's, it's weird to me that they didn't approve the app. I mean, it goes against all, all, all logic. I mean, I'm a logical person and it doesn't have any logic behind it. it anti-competitiveness well we'll we'll have to see you know we'll have to see uh see how it plays out you know as, uh, overall so yeah uh, i guess i mean i guess we'll have to see yeah so uh alex do we want to uh just uh f wrap up here and we want to we want to so your your web app that everyone can get to is at podcaster.fm correct yeah it's podcaster.fm please Podcaster.fm, and if you're looking for more information <laughs> about every, if you're looking for more information about everything that's going on, you can find Alex's blog at almerica.blogspot.com. That's a l m e r i c a dot blogspot dot com. Alex, thank you so much for uh, for joining us this evening. It was incredibly short notice, but we really appreciate it. We wanted to get down um, to the bottom of what happened. And I'm sorry that it didn't get approved. I was looking forward to using it. Yeah, I mean, 
be thanks for having me on. And, you know, hopefully they'll change their mind, maybe. Thank you, Alex. You never know. Okay, have a good night, guys. Good night. Thank you. Good night.